So here at 86 speed, we've gotten a lot of questions regarding turbo installations. Today, we're going to be answering some of those questions we've gotten, along with showing you our process of how we do things here. First off, we're starting with the oil pan. Mainly because the gasket takes a few hours to harden, so by the time you've finished installing the turbo, it should be done hardening. For this install, we're using a Toyota oil pan sealant. So the JDL kit already comes with a red spring in the wastegate, which gives it 5.6 pounds of boost. We're adding a neutral colored spring to bring that up to 6.9 pounds. That way, it's a safe amount of boost, and with a boost controller, you're able to double it to almost 14 pounds. After that, we mounted the wastegate onto the turbo manifold before putting it on the car. That way we have a lot more room to work around tightening up the bolts. Now prepping for the vacuum lines, we put one of these on the front and one on the top, and we're blocking off the back port. It's important to keep these loose until you do the vacuum lines, but you can go ahead and tighten the one in the back all the way. So how we do the lines is if you don't have a boost controller, you're connecting this bottom one straight to the turbo. And if you're doing it with a boost controller, you'll need a line from the top one to the boost controller, and then from the boost controller, there will be a line from there. You tee that in with the line in front of the wastegate, and that goes into the turbo. Now moving on to the engine bay. We're going to be swapping out a line underneath the AC compressor, so we're removing that first. After removing the belt, there are two bolts in the front and one in the back that needs to be removed. Then you're able to move the AC compressor out of the way, swap in the new line. Then you can put back the AC compressor and the belt, and then don't forget to torque the bolts back to 26 pounds. Now we're ready to put the turbo manifold onto the car. Basically, we're just swapping it into where the headers would go. Now onto the turbo. So you've got your hot side and your cold side. We're loosening up these 13 millimeter bolts so that we can completely remove the hot side. Once it's removed, we're going to take that and the gasket and put it onto the manifold. For the bolts, we're using blue Loctite to prevent them from loosening over time. And for right now, we're just hand tightening everything just so it's snug and that there's a little bit of play, making it easier when you're trying to fit everything together later. Now underneath the car, we're putting the dump tube on first with a little bit of WD-40 so it's able to move around a little bit once that's in place, we put on the downpipe next to the turbo, again just tight enough to hold it in place. Then go back under and connect the downpipe to the dump tube. Once everything's on, you can go ahead and start tightening everything up top. These bolts we're torquing to about 40-45 pounds, and once everything's tight, we move back down and tighten everything else down there. Back to the turbo. Now we're taking off the rest of the bolts to remove the other housing. Then we're taking just the turbo and putting that onto the car. And once again, we're just tightening it enough to keep it in place, but loose enough so that we're able to still rotate the base. Now we're putting on the oil return flange, and once that's tight, we turn it so that it's facing downwards. This one you can go ahead and tighten all the way. So for the oil return line, you need to twist one end so that when it's connected, it'll be facing the oil pan without hitting any of the belts. Once we got the end facing the way we wanted, we fastened the line onto the turbo, then did the same to the oil pan underneath the car. Once we got the line connected, we tightened up the bolts since we no longer needed to rotate the turbo anymore. Next, there's a plug right here that needs to be removed, then replaced with one of these. Now we can connect a line from here to the turbo. And for the last one, usually you would connect it to the throttle body, but this car in particular has a Grams throttle body, which doesn't have any cooling. So we connect it to the bypass on the left here. After that, we connected the piping that leads into the throttle body and put on the rest of the turbo. While we put everything else together, we didn't tighten everything all the way so that we still had some room to adjust the piping. Once everything was in place, we added the intake and tightened everything down. We filled up all the fluids and that's how we installed this kit. 